Uganda. Uganda is one of the poorest nations on this earth in Africa. This is a charity program 2000 by Pukrum HMA News Association and Foundation of Pastor George William Lubega from Uganda on his charity mission 2000 in Aldrup, Germany. For more information, check the internet, pukrumhmnews.zaxon.net, or contact your local Roman Catholic church or pastor. Help for Uganda.
Größen, das ist auch mit dem weniger, zu feiern, der Alter wird besser. An einem Apostelfest, wir haben einen Apostel. Pastor William LeBaker and Pastor Michael Herkel during a service held in Germany altered. In Germany, it's traditional to hold services like this. Gottes des Herrn werden erkennen, dass ich der Herr bin, wenn ich mich an euch vor euren Augen als heilig erweise. Und ich gieße reines Wasser über euch aus, dann werdet ihr rein. Ich reinige euch von aller Unreinheit und von allen euren Götzen. Ich schenke euch ein neues Herz, und lege einen neuen Geist in euch. Ich nehme das Herz von Stein aus eurer Brust und gebe euch ein Herz von Fleisch. Ich lege meinen Geist in euch und bewirke, dass ihr meinen Gesetzen folgt und auch... The elderly woman is reading a text from the Bible. Especially Bartholomew, whom we are commemorating today, has spread to Africa and beyond. The Lord hears. Yes. Some of us have also spoken to the Apostle, who has called from Africa to be prayed. Out. The Fürbitte des Heiligen Apostels Bartholomeus, helfe uns, die Einheit in Glauben. Amen. This is the community of Pastor William Lobega, Uganda, and his church. The children, we are trying to support this group. We're just a small part of it, trying to support. Hello, I'd like to welcome you on a very special program today in English language. And my very special guest is Pastor William George Lobega. You're a pastor from Uganda. Uganda, yes. Okay. I, uh, I come from Uganda, from the central part of Uganda, and that's called Masaka. I work as a, a, a priest of the Catholic Church, and uh, at the same time my assignment for some years back up to now, I'm working as a development coordinator of the diocese. I'm responsible for coordinating development work that is going on in the diocese. I have to request funding from different parts of the world, especially in Europe, uh, to, to set up uh, development projects work for the, our poor people in Uganda, especially in that part of Uganda, which is Masaka. So far as I know, Ghana is not a very peaceful place. You still have war in Ghana? Yeah, we still have uh, wars, but this time there are civil wars. Uh, we Ugandans are fighting each other, especially in the north and in the western part. It has taken 14 years up to now. Uh, people in the north have not fully accepted the leadership of the present president. 
just about five years back, another group of rebels came and started a war in the West, still uh, resisting the, the leadership of the present government. How many people have been killed through this other war? Uh, I don't have the statistics for the number of people, but uh, there are quite a number of people being killed now and then. Uh, it's just unfortunate that people, Ugandans, kill fellow Ugandans for really no cause because these rebels, uh, they don't uh, attack soldiers, but they attack uh, civilians who are harmless. They don't have the weapons and they attack them and they kill them just because they are accepting the present government. Otherwise, that is very sad to see that we are fighting each other. So in your country happens a lot of crime, awful crime? Of what kind? Awful crime. Uh, like what? Horrible crime. Like uh, soldiers uh, treat a threat of women, for example? Uh, that is not very common. But it is just a difference between the present government and the past government. This, this one, we have very peaceful soldiers. We can uh, talk with them. They, they are free people. They are not harassing people at all. So that is very, very good on the side of the army. And uh, in that case, there are no really horrible crimes that really are taking place in Uganda. But what happens in the past? It used to happen, yes, especially in the time of uh, Amin and the time of Obote. Soldiers could kill people, they could rape women, they could steal, they could uh, do anything they want, and no, no, no law could, do, could protect the, the civilians yeah, in that way. What's about the population of Uganda? How many young people uh, in Uganda? We have uh, a total population of 22 million people. Uh, that is babies, young people, and old people, and uh, we the inc increase rate is very high. Population is getting very high, and uh, they are, we have over 30 tribes having different dialects within that population. So what is the official language of Uganda? <laughs> That's an interesting question. <laughs> we don't have at the moment a very official language in Uganda. Uh, the official language is, is, is an imported language, which is English. Uh, we have, our parliament has not yet decided on which language to take as one of the official languages within the tribes in Uganda or the dialects in Uganda. So in order to avoid the conflicts, of saying this, the language of a certain tribe is dominating the other. I think the the, 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 the political leaders have put it aside as as a, not as a problem for the moment, and we are using English as a, a national language for for communication. As the national official language. Yes. What's about religion? Do you, uh, do you have many Christians in Uganda? Yeah, we have. Uh, the, Uganda is a Christian country. And we have three, we have two main uh, uh, Christian groups. They are the Catholics and the Protestants. And we have the Muslim as another group in the country. So there are three official religions. Other religions, uh, just like other sects of the Protestant church are there. But those are the three main religions in Uganda. But you don't have religions like Hinduism or... Hinduism? Yeah. No, we don't have it. Okay, we have some Asians yeah. who have come back to Uganda. You know, they were, uh, they were uh, chased away by Amin in the uh, in 1970s. Now they have come back, a little bit of them who are commercial. So some of them are practicing Hinduism, but it's not very, it's just for that group of people, the, 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 the Indians who are belonging to that sect. Um, how many Roman Catholic believers you have in Ghana? Uh, the Roman Catholic uh, is the, the percentage is 45 percent and then we have the the Protestants are 38 percent and then we have uh, 15 percent 
belonging to the Muslims and then the rest are people without any religion whom we call traditionists. They believe in the traditional gods of the of different parts of the country. Is it your first stay in Germany in Europe? No, this is not my first stay in, uh, in for German. I have uh, this is my sixth time, and I uh, have studied in in Europe, in Ireland, in uh, ninety six, ninety seven. So it's not my first time to be here in Europe. For which main project you collect money? Particularly for this this visit, I'm uh, collecting money for the school which is called Uganda Matters, Nasser and the Primary School Cutway, which is found in Masaka. Already this is not the first time, this is my sixth time to come for that particular project. We have constructed through money donated from this from this area of construct we constructed a nursery school which is known here as a kindergarten and uh, also a primary school and uh, there are structures for those two sections classes for those two sections and recently in 90, 1997 I was here and I collected the money, money for a multi-purpose hall that is a hall for any occasion which, whereby the students can meet for prayer, can meet for, for any social activity or drama, concert, music and then they can, you can meet parents, discuss with them in that hall and they can use it as a dining. So this time it's another project but related to that one. And the project I'm now collecting money for is to build a sleeping house for 200 girls. Uh, especially we shall make a priority to the girls who are orphans because of their parents having died of AIDS. You know AIDS is a very big yeah. problem in yeah. Uganda. Uganda is the eighth country all over the world with the highest percentage of AIDS cases. So we have many AIDS orphans, children helpless without parents, both parents have died and uh, the, their relatives are uh, burdened to, to have them, they also have their own children. At times it is uh, our culture to share children, it's not new, unlike here. <coughs> but there are times when the children are so many in a family and that becomes a very big problem. So we are trying to, to have these children with us. Uh, so we collect them from the village, we bring them to the school, they get the opportunity of studying, they get the opportunity of being with us, the, the, the three months they can be at school, and we help them in the all possible ways where we feel we can as parents. We can give them guidance, we can counsel them, uh, we can um, give them uh, better food and uh, accommodation in that way. Are the Ghanaian people able to treat AIDS and HIV virus in hospitals, for example? Yeah. There are many non-government organizations which have come up in the country to assist the AIDS victims. Uh, but uh, there's no there's no permanent cure as you know it's the kind of medicine that can prolong one's life and uh, one can still be functioning can go to work can uh, give some uh, service to the people while he has the or she has the the, the aids so we are praying that it can, uh, of course people now, the young people mainly, uh, the majority that suffer from this problem of AIDS. But a lot of literature, a lot of information has moved to various parts of the, world, of the country, informing people the many causes of AIDS. And I think we can see 90% of the people, only probably the young ones who have just been born, but the grown-ups, 90% are aware of all the main causes of the AIDS. So we think that the, the percentage of the 
case AIDS cases will decrease as we move on. This is a problem of understanding. Not everybody is able to understand English in Uganda. You have over 30 dialects or something like that. I guess education is very important. What's about ed education in Ghana? Education is quite very important, as you put it. And uh, different area, different uh, uh, different groups of people have organized their education. You know, the, from the very beginning, education to our country was brought by the missionaries who came in as the evangelizers of the gospel of Christ. So when the Protestants came in, they came with the education, with the building schools. When the Catholics came in, they also started building schools. When the Muslims came in, they also started building schools. So we have so many, at the moment, development which we have in Uganda on the sector of uh, schools is mainly based on, on a region. Because each region built its own schools. It you know, does not, at the moment, we don't discriminate because the school is built by Catholics, therefore, Muslims should not come in or a Protestant should not come in. No, that is not the case at the particular time. But in former days, yes, it used to be like that. And there was, a, that's how development came in with through competition. I build a school, you build a school, I build a better one, I build a better one. That was, a, that was even the case of hospitals. So, development in my country has been, uh, the greatest part has been played, played by the regions and uh, so education, uh, the, those uh, regions have valued education to such an extent that to know that they are citizens, they are members of the church, to grow up, or to, de to develop, they must go through education. So education is very important and uh, that's why we cannot do away with it and that's why the, my mission at this particular time with that school is to see that our area gets educated and more specifically for those uh, children who have nobody to care of. You know education in Uganda is not free. It, you have to pay money for it. And uh, so we try to find a way how we can lessen the burden from parents or guardians to see that if assistance is, comes from Europe to assist us, less that's very good. Then we can do some other things but construct a school is not a something very simple for us in, in Uganda. But probably to ask a parent to, to give money for education of a child, it could be look simpler than asking money for education of the child and at the same time asking money to build, to build the structures where the, the, the child is to, to be in. So when we get assistance from Europe to build, build structures, buildings, then we can also look after ourselves by finding money to see how we can assist the children in that way. So the young students and their parents, they have to pay money for the education, they have to pay money for books, for literature and for school uniforms? Yeah, you have to pay that. It is, uh, yes, it will come up, I think, as we, our <coughs> economy pro uh, comes up better, that we, free education will come up. There's a bit of it, but it's not complete free education. So. At the moment, a parent, a guardian, a relative, a friend who has, wants to put a child in a school has to give, have to offer some money to the to the to the teachers, to the school, so that his or her child can be educated. So people from Europe are able to support you if they want. Uh, you to support my project or to support the to people support in Uganda? Ghana and your project. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have been getting a lot of support from from Europe in different uh, development uh, projects in my country, and uh, we feel that uh, that partnership, which has grown up since time memorial, I think can continue. For us, we don't have much to give, but at least. We can give the love we, we have. We don't, more, we don't have more than that. So we are getting a lot of assistance from private organizations and even the, from the government of Germany for our country. We are very much, we are very much appreciate both from the official uh, government, which is the government of Germany, and also from private donor organizations. Mm. What are your impressions of Germany? 
um, of a people f friendly are they uh, do they want to help yeah I uh, have noticed uh, since I as I said this is my sixth time people here are very willing to give assistance to 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 poor people and uh, specifically in my diocese in my area there are so many other private German groups uh, based probably on a region who collect money in a parish like this one our trip and they give assistance to different churches or parishes in, 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 in my area for assistance knowing well that we cannot fully assist ourselves so that is sure a very good sign that people in Germany are willing. I think when I talk with them they realize that they, there is a time when they suffered and they were helped. So they, when they feel of somebody suffering, somebody going without food, somebody going without a house, somebody going without a medicine, they feel touched because the one time, especially the grown-ups, they had that problem. Yeah, so they can, they, now they can reflect yeah. Yeah. how painful it is to somebody to, to live a day without any meal, any food. So I think that is very good. I pray that that continues even to this younger generation. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. far, I appreciate the German people very, very, very charitable, very, very willing to contribute whatever they have, as long as they are convinced that it is money is going to proper hands for the use, being used. Mm. Well, it happened 60 years ago what Germans got themselves helped by Americans and all the other nations mm. after World War II. Mm. There's something new going on, more radicalism, more neo-nazism in Germany. You heard about the horrible news close to this place, about five miles far away mm. in Ludwigshafen Uppal. It happens there that four young German students set fire and try to kill refugees from Kosovo. Uh, does that make you scared or frightened if you hear such bad news? Okay, it is not very good to, to hear that, and it is sad really to see, because uh, to me I understand that this world belongs to everybody. Okay, you can say it is specifically for Germans, but I think that is, is not expected of a developed country. Probably that would be expected of a developing country, but a developed country like a German uh, that is not good to hear. I'm a bit scared, but I'm not totally scared because of that. Normally there are cases of that kind which happen all over the world, even in murdering people. You can have hear of a, a white person being murdered in Africa, but it doesn't mean that everybody is bad in that, can, in that part of the control mm -hmm. area. So there are people of that nature who are there, but they are also good people. I believe that I'm, I'm on good, good hands of good people. So that doesn't scare me much. You made a lot of friends in Altrip and in this region of Germany, I guess. Uh, do you have visitors from Germany, from, especially from Altrip in Uganda, in your hometown? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We recently we had one, uh, one girl from this village, Altrip, who visited us who visited me and they were with him, with her, sorry, for a full month and uh, she was happy to be with us, I understand. And I would wish if there are other people who would come to visit us. She purposely came for a, a practical course, which is a requirement for her course in uh, studies. So anybody else who would wish to come to my area for such a course or for any other simple visit, is welcome, no problem about that. How long is the flight from Uganda to Europe? Okay, when you add up uh, hours where you have to to wait for another connection, it, it totals to over 12 hours because it depends if you have a very direct co connection, it could take about 10 hours, but if you have some breaks here and there, it could go beyond even 12 hours. To, to, to German.
you have many young people in Ghana. What's about the rate of employment or unemployment? Uh, Uganda is being a poor country. Uh, Eighty-five percent of the people live in rural area, and fifteen percent live in urban areas. So people are self-employed. In that, in other words, because the eighty-five percent being in rural areas main, means mainly, and the Uganda being an agricultural country, that the agriculturists doing some work on their own farms, growing food for eating, and the surplus for selling. So employment is seen mainly through professional works like teaching, nursing, uh, in the industries, and of course we don't have many industries in Uganda, uh, just a few of them. The rate is very high recently. There you have heard of uh, uh, structure adjustment put up by World Bank and the IMF. Uh, Uganda was also, also affected by retrenched people from duties from uh, different uh, civil service, public service, and they cannot, government could not have enough money for them to be employed by the government itself. So people were cut off from payment and they had to go back home to do what is f affordable according to their ability. So unemployment is very high. Uh, for, for those people who have been once employed and they have no job anymore. Students from universities and colleges, they are roving, moving around the towns looking for employment and nobody is able to employ them. And they, in the studies they took cannot lead them to self-employment. So they are have a problem. What kind of opportunities does Uganda have to manage uh, its financial problems? Mm -hmm. uh, Uganda, as I said, is an agricultural country, so we mainly depend foreign money we have to get for our uh, running of the government it has to come from produces we make from our gardens, from our agricultural sector. Uganda is an agricultural country and mainly we grow coffee, cotton and tea as main products for exporting. And 65% of our income for Uganda comes from the sales of coffee. But you know, these, uh, these products we sell to Europe and the other countries, the continents, they are not processed. They are not secondary goods, they are primary goods. So we have not been able at this moment to turn these raw products into secondary goods or finished products so that we can be sold and have a higher market. And in that sense, we are controlled by the world markets whenever we come to sell our commodities to, to outside, outside Uganda because the world market rules the price and therefore there are times when uh, coffee is, is, is harvesting very little for the farmer and then that means that the farmer has to get very low and they are, they are consequently the government as well has to get very little. So that is we are mainly on agriculture and that's where we get our income. And of course if that is not enough the government has to borrow money in Europe and other countries which are can and that money has been accumulating at the moment, Uganda has a foreign debt of six, three point six billion U.S. dollars, which it has to pay uh, to to the World Bank, and uh, it has interest. Uh, so that is the problem we have in the country. What is the yearly income of a man or of a woman living in Uganda? Uh, according to our records. Uh, Uganda, a person has an income of $300 per year. But you can imagine that is average. Which opportunities do you see for your country to build up infrastructure and development? Uh, 
It's quite a very interesting question. My country has, uh, was one of the best during the time of the 1950s and 60s. And uh, when, we, when we took independence in 1962, it was still a good country. But then we had, uh, as we progressed, we had the uh, leadership and uh, we had uh, political leaders who did not uh, feel at, at heart with the country. And uh, as a result of that, we had the dictators. And I remember very well the time of Amin, 1970s. And then we had Obote, too. So the infrastructures were broken down. Uh, since 1986, up to this moment, there is a uh, positive development in terms of building up the infrastructure. The telephones are restored, the mobiles are already there, the roads are being uh, repaired, and new ones are constructed. The, the hospitals are being rehabilitated, and the uh, health centers and villages are trying to be constructed. Um, the education is tries the new schools are being built, although on no private basis, but that is already a good sign. In short, I could say that the, the infrastructure will depend mainly on two things. First of all, we need, we need to have peace in the country cannot build infrastructure if there is no peace. And then the second item is to industrialize the economy. If we don't have industries, Uganda is an agricultural country, and agriculture in the sense that we don't process anything out of the agricultural products we make, we produce, we transport them to other countries in a, in a, in a raw form. So we have primary goods and we have failed to turn them into secondary goods. So if our economy can be industrialized by having in industries in the country, that would be that would be improve on the infrastructure. And the investors can only come in to industrialize the economy if there is peace. So it is quite important that we have peace and then the economy can be improved on. What type of business do you have already in Uganda? Uh, okay, we, the population, as I said before, the population, the greatest part of the population lives in rural area. 85% of our population lives in rural area, mainly doing agriculture. Uh, the 15% is found in urban areas. That is mainly in, uh, employed by uh, either government or private sectors, and at the same time doing business. Our business is very easy, commercial business. In a sense, we have uh, traders who import things in the country, like uh, clothes uh, and other utilities in life. So that is much of the business we have uh, with our people. We normally depend much of what we have in Uganda in terms of business is, is being imported in the country. and. Uh, a business person has to have money, foreign money, has to buy foreign money or exchange foreign money uh, to go out and then buy things and then uh, bring them into the country. Otherwise, other businesses which are on a small scale, uh, like uh, coffee dinneries, those are the uh, factories that uh, uh, put off the husk of the coffee and then uh, just have the coffee berries which are transported to to, our, to other countries and we have simple like maize meals we have uh, factories making sugar uh, producing uh, making a little bit of the tea 
but then uh, the, the home consumption is not very high because some time back uh, the, the, the sugar was there in the industries and nobody and the, the production was too high compared to the to, to the purchasing power of the people so there were a lot of sugar in the industry and nobody was buying it because the buying rate was very slow compared to the production otherwise that would mean that there would be an export to other countries we had uh, also the uh, fishing industry but uh, according to European standards uh, it was not uh, there was a time when it was stopped and uh, closed in the sense that there was no export of uh, fish, fish in, uh, Europe, in Europe but recently it was opened again and uh, that is the industry that was also um, coming up to, to, to to add on the economy income of the country. Uganda needs to industrialize its country. Do you have all the chemical industry there? No, we don't have any chemical industry. We mm. have um, there is no chemical industry in, uh, in the strictest sense because uh, we have not had an investor coming in to invest in the chemical industry. What's about the climate and the water resources of Uganda? The climate? Our uh, climate is in a, is a, is a favorable, I would say, in a sense that in the sector of agriculture it is a favorable climate in some areas where there is a reasonable rainfall. In some areas, okay, they are quite dry at certain time and the rainfall is, is little, but uh, the central region and the western region, the climate is good, uh, that there is a reasonable rainfall. Uh, but I would feel that in the agriculture sector, if somebody wants to, to, to put a business in agriculture, there is a, I would suggest that irrigation is in inevitable. Uh, it's just unfortunate that we have water in, uh, from uh, some big lakes like the Victoria Sea, but uh, no irrigation in the country is being practiced, but just a few areas, but in the, for the ordinary person there is no irrigation, it's not possible because it's a costly item, otherwise the climate is good in some parts of the country and uh, the water is there, which could really compensate in case there is, there, there is a dry season. As you told before, usually people from Uganda don't have too much money, but you don't have money for food because you became a pastor of the Roman Catholic Church. How did you manage it? Me? Okay. To be, to, to be trained as the To be trained as okay. a pastor, as okay. a priest of okay. the Roman Catholic Church. <coughs> Okay, I, it's not, it's uh, some time back uh, since I was trained, I became a priest, ordained a priest in 1978. Uh, during my primary education, I was supported my, by my mother, uh, and um, extended the family members. In case of money, uh, they could always assist because my mother was poor but the literature she could produce from the agriculture and then the, the friends of our family could give then she enabled me. Uh, during my, in the last stages of my training in the priesthood ministry, the training was free for seven years. The last years of my training were free. Uh, my bishop of the diocese was was, look, uh, was the responsible of looking after me in the school, the seminary, and uh, that way I became <laughs> priest. Because with a lot of struggle, because whatever the case, you need the money to buy this and this and this and this. But at least, uh, with God's blessing, I managed to go through. And it's not an easy task now to be educated because. Uh, in Africa, we still have a problem that uh, our governments cannot help everybody in the education sector. For in Europe, it's good. 
and we hear of some loans being given to students that after graduating they can work and then pay back. That scheme is not available in many countries of Africa, particularly in my country. So it's not an easy work now to be educated uh, to a certain level of standard for for any job. So you, you either your parents have the money, or you have anybody outside who can help you. Probably. Do you have projects of scholarship in Uganda? Not really. They are not there. If, uh, at my knowledge, they are not there. The scholarships we normally have get uh, scholarships to related to the government uh, on bilateral uh, understanding. Uh, the student, well, this is a China, for example. Uh, the government of China could give some scholarships to Ugandans to go and study in China or India or England. So that is the how, they, but that is based on the government. So the government then try to select uh, students uh, who can really go and represent them in those countries for studying. And uh, that is not, the scholarships are not many, sometimes they are three, five, so that you can imagine the number of students who can go out are not many. Scholarships within the country itself, they are not there. They are not many, if at all they are there. It's a question of not specific scholarships, but if there is any need of a, this is a good child, people can raise money locally for a year or two or three in a school, mm. and that is cannot guarantee that the scholarship is continuous. But there are some people can, if there is a need of the village, the, the, the child, who has probably who has no support, financial support in a school, then the people at around the village, if they have the, the, the that family that had, they can sit down and they raise an issue of that kind and then see how they can help that person. But it cannot be guaranteed that they will help them more for throughout the, edu the education because they could help for two or three years and then say that is enough for us, you can find, try to find somewhere else. So it's not, it's not uh, constant in that form. When did you became a Christian? Oh, that's a good, <laughs> good question. Um, my parents are Christians, and they, you know, in, the, in my church, in the Catholic Church, normally a child, once a child is born. Uh, I think it is the same case in Europe. The child is taken to the church to be baptized, and in normal, in, 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 in normal circumstances, has to be given a name or a name of the of the religion of which their parents, his or her parents, are professing. So, my parents were Catholics, so I was baptized in the Catholic Church, and. The, so that's how I became a Christian. You have ever been in Rome? Uh, yes, I went there as a, as a, just for a visit, to just to see the Rome and the, the, the place there, but I never studied there. I just went there to, to see uh, some good places I hear of and then I stayed there for about two weeks and then I came back to my country just to have a look around. Roman Catholic Church celebrates its holy year 2000. Did you get hurt by Roman Catholic Church of Rome? To celebrate the year? No, um, to celebrate the year, but to feed the people. To feed? Yeah, for example, or to support projects in okay, Ghana, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the, we we are classified uh, in Africa, and I think in most of the uh, third world third world countries, we are classified as the developing countries, and we are classified at the same as third world countries because 
our income is low. There is third world countries, there is second world countries, and there is a first world country. So we are in third world countries, which is the last st stage or the last uh, class. Uh, we are so in that way. Even our churches, our our the our Catholic Church in Uganda is not an old an old uh, faith. It's not an old one. If I'm not mistaken, it is now almost 150 years old. It's not an old like here. Over here, over 800 is a, a town is 800 years old. So our uh, the Catholic faith in Uganda is around that 150 years. It's not very very old. So we still we have been helped by Rome in building the, the churches in our in, the, in our country in the building schools, uh, in the training. Uh, as I said, in the seven years I was, uh, I, uh, the last seven years of my priesthood training, I was uh, assisted by my bishop, but my bishop has no money as from his own pocket. He gets it from, he got it from Rome, and then he was brought to the seminary, and then everybody who was there could share it through uh, teachers through books, library, through uh, food and all the med medical care and all that. So even up to this time, Rome is sending a lot of money to developing countries to set up, to strengthen the faith, the Catholic faith in those areas or dioceses. So Uganda still benefits much from that. and. Uh, for example, in my diocese, if I'm not mistaken, there's every year, every, every year, to my knowledge, uh, about $100,000 that come in from from Rome to come and assist the diocese in, in various, in various uh, activities or projects in the diocese, like building churches, building convents, uh, some schools, poor ones, and uh, also helping the people who are poor in various ways, and also in hospitals. So What's about tourism in Uganda? You have a lot of visitors from other countries like Europe or America, North America. Mm -hmm. Okay, the tourism industry is there, but it's not very, very active probably as it should be. But as I said that Uganda in Europe has had this a bad name of mistreating people, murdering people, robbing people in the past years. So that na that bad name rings to the minds of some people for quite long. And uh, tourists who would wish to come to Uganda, unless they get the information of the current status of the country, they still think of the bad, the, the bad days. And that's why there are very few people who come to our country. Of course, even at this present moment, there are still some civil wars going on in, in two parts of the country, in the north and in the west and there are people being killed uh, by those the rebels. So people feel uncomfortable when they think of coming to Uganda in a full swing, as they would wish probably to go to other countries. But there are quite some who come, and uh, they see the beauty of the country, they see the nature of the country. But I think when we can, if we manage to get a total peace, then I think we shall have more people coming in to see. Because we have the national parks are there, we have good lakes there, people can see. We have uh, vegetation is good in uh, many parts of the country. There are, uh, there are cultural sites which can be good to be seen. So I think there is a lot that food people here could enjoy and have holidays in Uganda. But that's the problem we have. But I think gradually once the whole Uganda has total peace and uh, there is political stability, I think more people will come in.
you also will come when you want to come. Yeah, <laughs> it is possible to manage it. <laughs> we are looking for a sponsor <laughs> who will pay for flight, for example. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's just a small foundation, an organization, mm -hmm. which are in use association and foundation. Uh, how did you get contact to the area of Antwerp in Germany? Uh, it's not an easy question to answer, only that I could say that uh, I wrote a friend and then a friend made a contact with this family where I am now, and they were be here, and then they, they had, we had a formal contact for some time before, and then they, uh, they Mrs. Gabi here came to Uganda twice to see in which areas this uh, this town, this village trip can help. First, she, she came when she came the first time. She brought a, uh, she came along with a container full of clothes and other items that are basically to ordinary life. And uh, we managed to give the items to the people, the poor people in the area. But we found out that uh, those are perishing things, in other words. Clothes is good, but somebody gives him a cloth today. And then the next month he comes back or she comes back, the cloth is torn, I want another one. And uh, in addition, the when we for the second time when she came back we sat down together and we calculated how, how much cost it means to to, to transport uh, a container from Germany to to Uganda to Africa to Uganda so when we calculated it, it's not a small money it's a lot of money yeah yes, it's quite expensive so we discussed with the hand we said. I wish we could do something different because uh, clothing will never end. I know nothing can have an end in the sense that uh, this is an end. Eating has no end until you die, you have to eat if you want to live. So clothing, the same case. So we decided that you better put up a project which could last you for uh, years and years that could help the people in the area. Then we decided instead of bring container in the country for consuming consuming items, we better set up a project that is specific and it can be long lasting for some years. So we decided on that. Then money was collected from here. Then we started building a kindergarten. And then after the kindergarten was finished, we built a primary school. I'm talking of the buildings. And then uh, this is my, this time of my coming is also to extend the primary school with another building, which is a dormitory or sleeping room for about 200 girls uh, who are often. It's your sixth visit in Germany. In a couple of weeks you have to go back to your home country, Uganda, to Mazaka. Did you already plan to come again, to visit again Germany? Ah, uh, if there's a chance. I, and, uh, I, I think I will be coming back if there's a chance. Normally, uh, for me, I don't have the money. It's, you know, it's very expensive to travel from your Uganda to, to Germany. Uh, but normally, this family raises money for me for transport and the uh, upkeep when I'm here in German. So I'm uh, travel free and I uh, sleep, eat free. So if the chances are there again, uh, I do welcome them. I wish you all the best for okay. your future, okay. your personal future, and the future of your country, Uganda. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for being my guest on this. Very special program, help for Uganda. If you want to support Uganda, if you want to spend some money here on the bank on the account information.